Welcome to Medicos. This is Physiology Series and we were learning Sensory System and today's video is about the auditory system. We will dive deep into the physiology of auditory system. The ear is a complex organ divided into three main parts. The outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. The outer ear, consisting of the pinna and the ear canal, acts as a funnel. It collects sound waves and channels them toward the middle ear. The middle ear houses the eardrum and three tiny bones, the malleus, incus and stapes. The eardrum vibrates when sound waves hit it, setting these tiny bones in motion. This mechanical energy is then transmitted to the inner ear. The inner ear is the heart of both our hearing and balance systems. It contains the cochlea, a snail-shaped structure responsible for converting sound vibrations into electrical signals. We'll explore this process in detail in the next section. Auditory transduction is the remarkable process of converting sound waves into electrical signals that our brains can understand. It all happens within the cochlea of the inner ear. Remember those vibrations passed along by the middle ear bones? These vibrations create waves within the fluid-filled cochlea. Inside the cochlea lies the basilar membrane, a flexible structure lined with thousands of tiny hair cells. As the fluid waves travel through the cochlea, they cause the basilar membrane to vibrate. This vibration, in turn, bends the hair cells. The bending of these hair cells triggers a cascade of electrochemical events, ultimately generating electrical signals. These signals then travel along the auditory nerve to the brain, where they are interpreted as sound. But how does our brain know whether we're hearing a high-pitched flute or a low-pitched bass? The answer lies in the way different frequencies of sound activate different hair cells along the basilar membrane. This membrane plays a crucial role in our auditory perception. You see, the basilar membrane is not uniform in its structure. It varies in width and stiffness along its length. The base of the cochlea near the oval window is narrower and stiffer. This structural difference is key to how we perceive different sounds. This region responds best to high frequency sounds, such as the sharp notes of a violin or the chirping of birds. As we move towards the apex of the cochlea, the membrane becomes wider and more flexible, allowing it to respond to a different range of sounds, making it sensitive to lower frequencies. This is why we can hear the deep rumble of thunder or the low notes of a bass guitar. This tonotopic organization, as it's called, is a remarkable feature of our auditory system. It ensures that different frequencies of sound stimulate specific groups of hair cells. Each group of hair cells is tuned to a particular frequency. This precise encoding of frequency is crucial for our ability to differentiate between various sounds. Without it, our world would be a cacophony of indistinguishable noise. Once the hair cells in the cochlea have transformed sound vibrations into electrical signals, these tiny yet powerful cells play a crucial role in our ability to hear. These signals embark on a journey to the brain via the auditory nerve. This nerve acts as a high-speed highway, ensuring the swift transmission of auditory information. This nerve carries the encoded information about the frequency, intensity and timing of sounds. Each piece of data is meticulously preserved to ensure accurate sound perception. The auditory pathway is complex, involving several relay stations in the brainstem before the signals reach their final destination, the auditory cortex. These relay stations act as checkpoints, refining and processing the signals. This specialized area of the brain is responsible for processing and interpreting the incoming auditory information. The auditory cortex deciphers the signals, allowing us to recognize and understand different sounds. Lesions or damage along this pathway can lead to various hearing impairments. The integrity of this pathway is vital for normal hearing function. For example, Damage to the auditory nerve can result in deafness, a condition where the transmission of sound signals is completely disrupted. While damage to the auditory cortex can impair our ability to understand speech or localize sounds, such impairments can significantly affect communication and quality of life. Now, let's shift our focus from hearing to balance, another crucial sense that relies on the intricate workings of the inner ear. While hearing allows us to perceive sounds, balance helps us navigate our environment safely and efficiently. 
Our sense of balance, or equilibrium, is maintained by the vestibular system, a complex sensory apparatus located within the inner ear. This system is essential for our daily activities, from walking and running to simply standing still. The vestibular system works in close coordination with our visual and proprioceptive systems, the sense of our body's position in space. Together, these systems ensure that we can move smoothly and react quickly to changes in our environment. It provides the brain with information about head movements and spatial orientation, allowing us to maintain our balance and coordinate our movements. This information is crucial for activities such as driving, playing sports, and even simple tasks like bending down to pick something up. The vestibular system consists of three semicircular canals and two otolith organs, the utricle and the saccule. Each of these components plays a specific role in detecting different types of motion and orientation. These structures are filled with fluid and lined with specialized hair cells, much like the cochlea. When we move, the fluid inside these canals shifts, causing the hair cells to bend and send signals to the brain about our body's position and movement. The semicircular canals are responsible for detecting rotational movements of the head, like shaking our head no or nodding yes. These three canals are oriented at right angles to each other, allowing them to sense rotation in all three planes of motion. Each canal is filled with a fluid called endolymph. When we rotate our head, the endolymph within the canals lags behind due to inertia. This lag causes the fluid to push against a gelatinous structure called the cupula, which sits atop hair cells. The bending of these hair cells generates electrical signals that are transmitted to the brain via the vestibular nerve. The brain then uses this information to interpret the direction and speed of head rotation. While the semicircular canals detect rotational movements, the utricle and saccule are responsible for sensing linear acceleration, such as the feeling of moving forward in a car or going up in an elevator. These otolith organs contain a gelatinous membrane embedded with tiny calcium carbonate crystals called otoconia. When we accelerate linearly, the otoconia, due to their inertia, lag behind, causing the gelatinous membrane to shift. This shift bends the hair cells beneath the membrane, generating electrical signals that are sent to the brain. The brain then uses this information to determine the direction and magnitude of linear acceleration. We've explored how sound waves are transformed into electrical signals, how our brains decode the symphony of sounds and how the vestibular system helps us maintain our equilibrium. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for more educational content from Medicozy, where we'll continue to unlock the mysteries of the human body. So you subscribe to be with us. Until next time, stay balanced and keep learning.